Hi everybody, welcome back to FOSS Media. Today we're going to be having a look at I2P, which is known as the Invisible Internet Project. Similar to the Tor project in many ways, but very different in many others. A little more difficult to set up, but well worth the effort. By the end of this video, we'll have an unfirewalled I2P client up and running where we can send and receive anonymous emails, download torrents, and connect to all kinds of other great services. So to start off, we have a couple different versions to choose from. The first one that you're looking at right now is I2P, which has many built-in services, including a torrent and email client, as well as an address book. But it is fairly heavy on resources and requires the use of Java. Uh, I2PD, I2BD, on the other hand, is much lighter. It implements a C language instead of Java, but unfortunately it doesn't come with all the built-in tools. Uh, so in this example, I chose to go with I2P as I want to util utilize these additional uh, services as much as possible. So to get this software installed and configured on the system, we'll just first have to go through a few different steps. The first one would be just to install a couple of dependencies, and there are just two of them. The first one would be the Java runtime, and the second one would be the Java development kit. And then we'll configure the browser, in my case it would be Firefox, by creating a new profile, where we can then add a proxy that will allow us to connect to the I2P network. And then we'll download the installation jar file from the I2P website, and then we'll launch the I2P jar uh, file installer, which will then open up a GUI tool. And after we're done with the installation, we can then launch the router. And this will then give us a randomly generated, generated UDP port, which we'll then need to allow in our firewall and forward through the router. Uh, this step is absolutely necessary if you don't want the network to be firewalled. Uh, theoretically, you can let UPnP do this for you, but I found that manually forwarding the port in the router was just far more reliable. Uh, we'll then set a rule in the system firewall to allow this port, and then we'll have to forward this port through the physical router itself, and we're done. So with all that out of the way, let's uh, maybe just jump over to the terminal and install those dependencies and we can get started. So as good practice, I'm just going to update my system. So I'll say sudo apt update and enter for my password. And yeah, maybe I'll just update that quick. Okay, so now we're all up to date. The first package we're going to need will be the Java runtime. And to install that, we can just say sudo apt install default jre, hit enter. And 177 megabytes, so it is a fairly large file or package. So I'm just going to select yes to install that. It looks like everything went well. And just to double check that it was installed successfully, all we have to do is say Java dash dash version. And there it is. So the second package we're going to need will be the Java development kit. And to install that, we can say sudo apt install default. Spell that right, maybe. Uh, and that package would be uh, jdk. I'll hit enter. And select yes. And we're done. And then to double check that, all we have to do is say Java C dash dash version. And we're good there. So now that we have our dependencies installed, maybe we can just jump over to our browser. I uh, can figure that and then we can launch I2P. So I'll do that. And the first thing we have to do is create a new profile. Because uh, if we change the proxies in this profile, uh, we won't be able to connect to a ClearNet website after we do that. Uh, so what we'll do here is just create another profile for I2P. And then whenever we want to connect to that, we can switch to the uh, I2P profile. And whenever we want to connect back to the ClearNet, we can just switch back to our default one. I guess an ultimate situation here, here would be to have a dedicated machine just for I2P. Uh, because when we do open it up for the first time, it takes a while for connections and peers to establish. Um, whereas, say, for example, the Tor, the Tor browser, as soon as you install it, you can just jump on it and start going to uh, Onion Sites. But Eep Sites are a little bit different 
as the network needs to build up. Um, so not only would you have to switch back and forth, um, switch your profiles back and forth, you could also just let it run 24 seven. Um, but that's not an option for a lot of people. Um, so I figured I'd just go this route today. I show you how to set up on your actual host machine and then just show you how you can switch back and forth to use whichever profile you may happen to need. So to create that profile, we can just go up to the address bar here and just type about with a colon and then profiles and hit enter. And here's our two our profiles that we're using right now. As you can see, the one at the very top is marked as a default and that'll be our ClearNet profile. Well, we'll definitely have to create one for I2P. So to do that, just click on create new profile and then next, and then give it a name. I'll just call it I2P and hit enter. And there's our new profile down there, down here at the bottom. So to open that up, we can either click on launch profile in a new browser. Uh, we can click restart normally, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to close Firefox right off and shut it down and then reopen it. And as you can see, this is a completely new browser. Uh, like we haven't configured anything at all. And that's exactly the way it should look. So now that we have our new profile active, we just have to uh, change the proxies. And to do that, we can just click on the uh, hamburger icon up here on the top right, and then go to settings. And then on the very first general page, just scroll down to the very bottom where you get to network settings and then click on settings and then manual proxy configuration. And the first thing we're gonna need is the address for local host. So that's your own, uh, your own machine. And the IP address for that is 127.0.0.1. And the port that I2P uses is 4444. And we're also going to want to uh, create this for HTTPS. Even though we'll be using just HTTP sites, uh, might as well enable it, I guess. So I do that, just uh, enable this radio button right here. That'll autofill. And then come down here to the bottom where it says no proxies for, and just type in localhost with a comma, a space, and then its IP address, which is 127. Dot zero, dot zero, dot one. And then once you have all that in there, I'll also make sure too that SOX5 is enabled up here. And then just click on OK. So now that we have our new proxy set, uh, we can go ahead and uh, continue to uh, configure this profile. But maybe just to uh, show you quick here, if I try to search for any other website, say YouTube, You can see the proxy server is refusing connections uh, because we just changed the ports um, to utilize I2P, uh, which isn't really a big deal. We can just switch back to our ClearNet profile uh, because we still have to download the JAR installer. And we can't do that in this one, but I think what we can do now is maybe just go ahead and finish configuring it. And then we can switch back over to our ClearNet profile, download the installer, and then go from there. So a couple other configurations I want to do. Uh, right on this page right here is maybe just disable right where it says recommend extensions and recommend features. Because uh, we don't want Firefox really to remember or recommend anything that we do. So then I'll go to home and maybe just disable this stuff right here. Such as the pocket and all that stuff and get rid of all this. And then go to search. I'll make DuckDuckGo my default. And yeah, let me get rid of these guys too. And Bing, definitely not going to need that. Get rid of that stuff. And then go over to privacy and security. And do delete cookies when uh, in data when Firefox is closed. I'm uh, basically just doing some uh, general browser hardening here because we don't want Firefox to remember stuff that we're doing. And because if it recommends and suggests stuff, it has to remember it. So we don't want that. So I'll just get rid of all these. And I'm going to block all these too, just to be on the safe side.
Okay, so it looks a little bit better. And then everything looks good, good down here. Uh, right here where it says HTTPS only mode, we definitely wanna make sure that uh, this option down here at the bottom is enabled, where it says don't enable HTTPS only mode. Uh, that's because the sites that we're gonna be visiting on IGP or HTTP, or use the HTTP protocol. And if we leave this, op or if we don't select this uh, option right here, every time we try to load one of those sites, it'll give us an error saying that we're going to a dangerous site or something stupid like that. So yeah, definitely make sure that you have this uh, uh, option selected down here. And right here where it says DNS over HTTPS, I'm just gonna select off for that because then we can use our known, uh, the DNS servers that ITP wants to use. And one last thing I wanna do is just go to about profile and we, where we can now block some, uh, uh, just perform some further steps to help block DNS. So let's say about profile, or sorry, not about profile, but about config and proceed with caution. And then up here, just type in DNS and this will auto-populate for you. And the set settings are gonna to wanna to disable are this guy right here, uh, network DNS disable IP version six. That's now set to false. And we just wanna hit this toggle to change it to true. And do the same thing with this one right here. And this guy's already true. And I also want to uh, make sure this is disabled also. So I'll select that, <clears throat> excuse me. And now that we have that done, that should block our DNS for us. And yep, we still have to uh, download the, uh, the actual installer though. So to do that, we're gonna have to switch our profiles. So I'll just type in about, I put my fingers on the right keys here, about colon profiles, hit enter. And then we wanna use this one right here. That's our default Kubernetes one. So I'm just gonna click on launch profile in a new browser. And here's my original profile. So now we should be able to search to wherever we want. So I'll say I2P and click on the first link. And then click on get I2P. And then for Linux, we have a couple different packages here to choose from. Um, as you can see at the top here, we have Windows, then Mac, and we got a couple different ones for Linux. The first one downloads the jar file and the second one uses the repositories. I've tried both and I just had better luck with the jar file. So that's the one I'm gonna be going with today. So to download that, just click on this button right here. And that should start the download. Yep, there we go. So let's let that do its thing. And maybe just scroll down a bit here. Uh, just your not firewall. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, just some basic stuff, but we'll get to all this. Uh, we already configured our proxies. And they, yeah, they look just like that. So that's good. And right here, uh, it's giving us a, another uh, setting that we can change. So maybe we can do that. I'm um, sure the setting is true. So I'll just copy this. And let me see here. Um, we have to go back to our ITP pro profile. And here, we'll just type about config. Receive a caution. And then I'll paste that, what we just copied in there. And I believe it wanted this set to true. So, and that would be this guy right here. It's now false. I'm just gonna hit this toggle to set that to true. And then go back to our ClearNet profile and our download is now complete. So now if we go back over to our terminal, I'll just go into downloads. And there it is right there. Um, so I guess as a uh, safe measure, we should probably verify this. So to do that, we can just say SHA-256 sum, the space, and then copy and paste this guy in. And then enter. And there's the uh, generated hash for us. So now we just have to compare that to the one on the website. 
go back here and there's a the hash right there. So it has to start in 977 and end in 28D. So 977, 28D. And here we have 977, 28D. So we know we're good. So now we can go ahead and install it. And to do that, we can just use the Java command. So let's say Java dash jar space, and then copy and paste this guy in right here. And then enter. And I'll launch GUI installer for us. And I'm going to click OK to use English. And then next. And next. And right here is where I2P is going to be installed. You can, of course, put this anywhere you want in your system. But I think just to make life a little bit easier today, I'll just leave it in my home folder. So I'll click next. And target directory will be created. So it's just telling us it's going to create this I2P directory inside my home folder. And I'm okay with that. And I'll click next. And here's the command right here. We're going to need to launch the router. Uh, it won't let me put that on my clipboard for some reason, but not too big of a deal. It's fairly easy to remember. So I2P and I2P router start. I can remember that. Okay, next. And done. So now that we're installed, we can launch the router. And to do that, we need to say home. And then your username, and then I2P, and then I2P uh, rotor, start. And that should do it. Well, before I fire it up, I'm just going to use the status command and just make sure it's not already running, uh, which it doesn't seem to be. And instead of using this long command, I think I'm just going to set up an alias quick. So sorry, just bear with me here a second. So I'll just use, uh, I guess, FIM. And I'm just going to put this in bash aliases, but you can, of course, put this in bash or see if you want to do the same thing if you don't have a, uh, a bash aliases file or create one or uh, do whatever you want. I'm just going to go down here and just say I2P and alias. And I guess I'll just call this, call this I2P start status and and throw that path in here that we've already confirmed that works and I think I'll do the same thing for uh, start and stop too so this part is actually completely unnecessary you can always just use the full command if you want I just plan on using this later so I thought I'd make it a little more uh, user friendly so we'll say start. And then down here we'll have stop. I like so, that should be a bit better. So I'm just gonna save this. And reload my bash RC. There we go. Now, if I say I2P um, status, it tells us it's not running. So now to start the service, we can just say I2P start, and that should start up for us. Uh, but again, if you didn't set the alias, you would uh, just use the uh, the full path, which would look something like home, and then your username here, whatever that is. And you can always just use uh, this guy right here, and then I2P. And then I2P uh, rotor start. And that will also do it. But for me, I'm just going to say uh, I2P start. Now starting out the service and it gives us the process ID. So now if we go back to uh, Firefox, there it is right there. And as you can see, it opened up in the uh, profile that we just created. And this would be the clearnet profile, and we don't need that anymore. So we can just deal with this guy right here. 
And I guess it's a good idea too, to just to uh, take note of the address up here. So we're connecting a local host, 7657 for the port, and we're at welcome. So when we set a bookmark for this later, you can just leave out the welcome and just make sure to uh, set one for your local host, uh, 7657. But yeah, I guess we can uh, just move ahead with the installer though. So we've already se selected English, so I'm just gonna click next. And then go with dark mode, next. And bandwidth test. So I'll click next and just let it do its thing. And after this is done too, like I mentioned earlier, it's gonna take a while for I2P to uh, build up tunnels and piers and all that. So you may just have to wait about half an hour or so after you install it, just to let that stuff accumulate uh, before you can start visiting EAP sites. But yeah, it didn't take long. So let's click next. And then right here, it's you're going to designate how much bandwidth you want to use. Um, as I can see here, it's going to start off at 80%. Uh, that's a little steep for me because I do have a gigabit connection, and that is quite a bit. And if you set this up too high, your um, normal browser will be very, very slow. And that would be your, your uh, cleared out browser. So I think I'm just going to bring this down a bit to, I guess, maybe 60%. Uh, because theoretically, you do want to give a little bit more than you're taking from the network. But uh, yeah, it looks good to me. So I'll click Next. And Browser Application Setup. Browser needs to be configured to work with I2P. So yeah, we're going to definitely have to forward that port and do all that. And uh, BitTorrent, Email Clients. Yeah, so we get a web server, email client, uh, torrent client, and an address book which comes in real handy because with uh, with Tor, even though it is a lot easier to set up, um, it is a bit sometimes troublesome to find the actual Onion sites. Uh, but with I2P, it, gener it generates an address book for you and really uh, goes a long way to help you get started with uh, with I2P. So let's gonna click next. And welcome to the invisible network. Take some time for your peers to integrate with your router into the network. Uh, while this is happening, you can still explore ITP applications and get to know the way around the router console. Uh, here's a quick guide about latest news, troubleshooting, and all that stuff. But I'm just going to click or click on finish. And here's our console right here. And our first order of business will be to take care of this network as firewall issue. Um, if we leave it as is, it'll most likely still work but it will be much slower. So we'll definitely need to fix that, uh, which we can do right now. The uh, first thing we'll need to do is to find the randomly generated UDP port uh, that was created by the application when it was installed. And to find that, we can just click on router console and then go down to configuration, uh, network. And as you can see up here at the top, it's enabling UPnP to um, uh, forward our ports to the firewall. Uh, but like I said earlier, this isn't always reliable. And I have found in the past that it did fail quite often. Um, but if we just manually set it in the router, it uh, we shouldn't have any issues with it. And here it is right here, the UDP port that we were going to want, going to, want to forward in the router. So in my case, that would be uh, 29387. This will be completely different for you. At least it should be. So I'm just going to copy that somewhere. And yeah, next we'll actually have to close off this router um, because if we try to allow this port in the firewall or port forward it through the router, uh, we may get an error because um, I2P is currently trying to use this port to forward this traffic. So we're gonna have to stop I2P and then we can do the router and firewall stuff. And then when we restart it and come back, uh, keep our fingers crossed, this network is firewalled stuff should be gone and it should say network okay. So let's make sure I got that on my clipboard here and then go back over the terminal. Actually, maybe I'll just close this window. Then go back to terminal and then we're gonna have to stop um, I2P. So to do that, we can just say a home and then user uh, I2P and then I2P router stop. And that command should stop the router. 
Uh, but because I said an alias for that, I'm going to try that out and just make sure that works. So I'll say I2P stop. And there we go. So now the service has stopped. We can add that uh, port to our firewall. So I'll say sudo UFW allow, and then I'll paste that port in. And again, for you, this will be completely different. A, a different port number. So I'll just get enter, put in my password. Oh. Well, that's weird. Oh, there we go. Now the rule is added. Now we just have to uh, add that to the router. So to do that, I'm going to go back to Firefox and open up the uh, my ClearNet profile in a new browser. And then I'll go to my router and sign in. And then I'm going to go to advanced and security uh, port forwarding. And as you can see, I already have a couple in here, um, but I'm going to add another one. So let's click add and then select your device. Um, your router will obviously look uh, probably different than mine, um, but the settings should still be the same and same with the process. So everything uh, you're doing on your end should reflect what I'm doing here. So that's my device right there. And in case you're not sure your device, you can always just go back to your terminal and just type IP space A, hit enter. And for me, that'd be ethernet. So that'd be right there, 192.168.1.200. So we'll go back here. And now that I know I have the right device selected, I'm going to change TCP to UDP. I'll we'll actually have to do this for both, but we'll start with UDP and then just paste in the port number that you copied from I2P. And then come down here and also do that for the WAN. And just make sure everything looks right. So I got the right device there, UDP, our ports are in there. Looks good, I'm just gonna hit apply. And there's a new rule I just added right there. So now we just have to do the exact same thing for um, TCP. So I'm just going to cl click on new and do the exact same that we, thing that we just did, except I'm going to leave it at TCP. And I'll paste that port in there and there, there, and there. And then I'll apply that. So now we have one set for TCP and UDP. So now I can sign out of the router. And we set the firewall. So now we should be able to go back to the uh, terminal here and restart I2P. So I'm just going to say I2P start. And in case you didn't set your alias, that would be home user I2P, I2P. And yeah, sorry. Almost forgot the command there. ITP writer start. And there we go. So now if I jump back over to Firefox, that window should pop open. There it is. Perfect. And as you can see, it says network OK. And that's exactly what we were hoping for. Uh, so at this point, I think I'm just going to let it sit for a bit, uh, accumulate peers and tunnels and all that good stuff. Because um, the longer you wait, the more success you will have, have with it. Uh, especially searching for EAP sites and stuff like that. Um, Cause yeah, it does take a, a little while. And like I said too, it's definitely an ultimate situation be to have this on its, on its own machine or in a VPS somewhere. So you can just constantly leave it running. And that way too, you wouldn't have to switch back and forth between profiles, but not an option for everybody, but yeah, you know, I just thought I'd mention it. And yeah, well, that's doing its thing and uh, making connections and cl connecting peers. I think what I'm going to do is maybe just pause the video and then just come back in half an hour to an hour or so uh, while this has done all that. And then we can just pick up from there. So I'll see you then. And I'm back. That's oh, where I got sidetracked there. 
But as you can see, ITP has been running now about three hours. The network connection still indicates it's okay. Uh, so we should be able to connect to some of these EAP sites without any issues. And like I mentioned earlier, the longer you let this run, the more likely you'll have with it uh, because it does take time for connections to be established, peers to be found, and a lot of good stuff. So I think what I'll do now maybe is just go to this address book and show you how you can find some of these EAP sites. And then after that, we'll come back here and I'll show you to get your hands on some of these guys. Um, I did already play around this for a bit just to make sure it was going to work. And that's why it added this local tunnel here for us. Um, I2P snark, and that's where we'll get our torrents from. But for now, let's click on address book. And this will give us a bit of an overview. Uh, definitely worth the read, but for now, I just save some time. I'm just gonna click on router. And this will give us a, uh, a nice big list of automatically generated deep sites already inside of our address book, which is certainly nice to have, uh, especially if we're used to something like Tor. Um, even though the Tor browser is easier to set up and get going, uh, it does take quite a bit of time to find your onion sites. Uh, but here with I2P, or, sorry, I2P, <laughs> well, I'm having a hard time saying that today. Um, you get a whole bunch of EAP sites that are already automatically generated for you, uh, which is actually great to have. So we just have to find one that we want to visit here. And maybe I'll try uh, not Bob. This is actually loading up pretty quick. I was about to say it takes uh, a lot of patience, but uh, yeah, this isn't going too bad at all. Because it's been running for three hours. And here we go. So what this site does is it gives us a great big list of uh, more EAP sites to check out. And as you can see, one really nice feature is it gives us a bit of a health meter. So we know what our good indication of how much luck we'll have when we click on these. And there is quite a few of them. Wow. But uh, yeah, that's uh, not Bob. So definitely a good place to find more EAP sites. And because this is a YouTube video, I am a little leery as to what to click on. So I'm not going to go too crazy here. But it's definitely a good spot to... Uh, to find more sources if uh, if you find that the uh, address book just isn't giving you quite what you need. But yeah, I think what we'll do now is just go back to the uh, router console. I should have set a bookmark for this. And there we go, back home. So now I'm just gonna click on these guys and I'll find you how to find some of those. And then to find a site, Actually, the uh, configuration page here will suggest a couple for you down at the bottom. Yeah, and there they are. Uh, this Postman one's really popular, so I'm just going to click on that. And I guess the biggest challenge for us now is just to find something that isn't copywritten. Um, yeah, we're to start with that. I can't think of one thing off the top of my head that wouldn't be copywritten. Let me be able to try this. Gary's Mod Linux. That should be safe. So say we want to download that. We just come over here to the magnet link, uh, give it a right click, and then select copy link. And then we want to go back to the page we were just on. So just go up here and click on uh, I2P Snark. Uh, to get this page back and then just click on add torrent paste the url in here and then click on add torrent and this will uh, take some time to uh, find peers and uh, start downloading i'm guessing about i don't know maybe three or four minutes and uh yeah, maybe while it's doing that, I'll show you where you can go about finding the file after it's done. So I'll just go back to my terminal here. And now files-la, the folder that we're looking for will be inside of .i2p, which is right there. So I'll just cd into that. And 
And that's the directory we're after right there, I2P snark. So if we go into that, and ls, yeah, there's a torrent that we're currently downloading right now, uh, Gary's mod.tar.gz. So when that uh, torrent's done downloading, you just come back to this directory, and then you can copy and paste it or remove it from this file, whatever you want to do. Um, it is suggested actually to leave it in there as long as possible, just so that way other people, uh, you can see it for other people who are also downloading it. Um, so normally what I do is I just leave it inside this directory and then I just copy and paste it um, onto my hard drive from there or a thumb drive, whatever. And then just uh, I'll save it to any other device or disk and, and go from there. But yeah, that's how you uh, find your torrents. And as you can see right now, we've uh, started downloading. Um, it says seven hours. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't completely trust that. That'll go down here in a few minutes. Um, it is a fairly large file, though. I think it was over a gig. Um, and it's only downloading at about a, um, a half a megabyte or whatever. So it is going to take some time. Um, sorry, not half a megabyte, but uh, 100 kilobytes. And that will go up over time, too. Uh, we've only been at... Or, started downloading this about a minute or two ago. So about five or 10 minutes from now, that'll probably double to about 200 or something. Uh, not crazy fast, but uh, you're not gonna get speed with I2P. I guess that's the, uh, the biggest trade off here. But yeah, definitely a much safer way to go about doing this kind of stuff we're doing right now. Or if you want to set up a completely anonymous email account or something like that, I think uh, I2P is a good place to go. So let's go back to the router console. And then whenever we want to uh, see the progress of our torrents, we can just click on the torrent button right here. And there it is right there. So yeah, right now it says eight hours and it's going a little bit faster. So. Yep, uh, patience is definitely a, a factor here. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, just a couple of final thoughts. Uh, don't share the I2P generated random port that we used to forward through the router and the firewall like I did today. Uh, that wasn't my smartest move. I'll definitely have to change that. Um, you may want to set a static IP for the interface that you're using to connect to I2P. If DHCP uh, changes on you, it won't match the one that was forwarded inside your router, inside of your router and your firewall. Um, if you don't set a static IP and your connection does become firewalled, I uh, just double check and make sure that your local IP address hasn't changed. Uh, that's the most likely factor uh, to consider that I can think of that would cause your network to be firewalled. Um, ideally, it'd be best to have software or um, have the software running on a dedicated machine or a VPS, a very private server. Uh, this way you can just leave it running 24 seven. Um, build a huge amount of peers and connections. And then when you go to download something or use a network, it'll be much, much faster. But not an option for everybody, but uh, definitely something to think about. And lastly, of course, just be careful about what you're clicking on. Uh, it's not the normal free net. So you do have to kind of be careful and mindful about uh, where you're going. But yeah, I think that about wraps up for I2P. Um, I hope this you guys found this video helpful and to see you on the next one. Uh, bye for now.